Hey everyone, and welcome back to another installment of the Elemental Extraction series. We're on number seven, nitrogen. Um, nitrogen is a colorless, odorless, tasteless gas that makes up the majority of air. Uh, air is actually 78% nitrogen, and it's not something the body can use, so it's just an inert, an inert gas as far as we're concerned, uh, but air is mostly nitrogen. Uh, so in that case, you know, what you could do is just go like this, and now I've got a 78% pure sample. Oh, sorry, did you want a more thorough video than that? Yeah, okay. All right, well, this is my actual sample of nitrogen, and uh, it doesn't really look like much, of course, because, like I said, it's clear and colorless, but uh, it is full of nitrogen, and the way I made it was with liquid nitrogen. Um, what I did was I filled this vial up with the liquid and allowed it to boil off, uh, so that that displaced all of the regular air and we're left with just nitrogen in there And so then I capped it and put some tape around it to seal it now Of course, that's not the best way of doing this But uh, an, an ampule would really be what you want to do, but I think this is good enough for now Nitrogen naturally occurs as N2 the uh, the dinitrogen molecule and that bond between the two nitrogen atoms is a triple bond And it's extremely strong. It's actually the second strongest uh, diatomic bond, I believe. I think uh, carbon monoxide is the strongest. Uh, one of the major applications of nitrogen is as fertilizer, uh, ammonium nitrate being a very uh, popular one. Here's a bag of fertilizer from my garage, and if you search around on them, you'll usually find something like this, and it says uh, total nitrogen, and that's uh, available nitrogen is what it's called. It's what plants can use, and you see they've got various components. So there's uh, ammonium, urea, um, and various other ones for nitrogen. Um, usually they'll have this number as well, this uh, 26212, uh, that's called an NPK number, N being for nitrogen, P for phosphorus, and K for potassium. And now you also may have heard of ammonium nitrate in a different context, uh, being used as explosives. So because that dinitrogen bond is incredibly strong, uh, it really wants to be that. So if you get a compound that has a ton of nitrogen atoms in it, uh, they would much rather be nitrogen molecules. So uh, they, they, they can be unstable, and when they rearrange themselves to form nitrogen molecules, that releases a lot of energy very quickly, and it produces a lot of nitrogen gas, and that is the definition of an explosion. So since this series is about extracting elements, right, we need to do some chemistry to actually produce the nitrogen. Uh, and so there's not very many reactions that produce uh, nitrogen if you discount explosives, which I definitely want, don't want to do any of those. Uh, but we can do one uh, chemically, and I'll set that up in a second. So here I'll be making nitrogen chemically by the reaction between ammonium chloride and sodium nitrite. And that's nitrite as in NO2, not nitrate NO3, easily confused. So we're using 15 grams of ammonium chloride and 10 grams of sodium nitrite that's going to go into 100 milliliters of water. Um, stoichiometrically, this is about twice as much ammonium chloride as is required, but I wanted to make sure that that's an excess because sodium nitrite uh, is fairly toxic. I mean, I know that it's a uh, food additive, but as a pure chemical, uh, it's not very friendly. So we want to make sure that we get rid of it completely. So first of all, let's go ahead and dissolve the ammonium chloride into the 100 milliliters of water. So just dissolving the ammonium chloride is actually endothermic. So the room is about 25 Celsius, and the solution is about 15. If the camera focuses, there you go. About 15, so pretty cold. So now we'll dissolve the sodium nitrite as well. Now that everything is dissolved, I've removed the stir bar and I'll add in a couple of these boiling chips. They're uh, just activated carbon and uh, we're going to be heating this in a minute. So these provide a uh, nice high surface area for uh, boiling to uh, occur on. Otherwise, you've got you know, the very smooth glass surface in there that's uh, difficult for bubbles to form on and, and you can get bumping, which is bad. So that's why we add these. So now let's go ahead and start heating uh, very gently. This will actually be the third time I've tried this reaction. Uh, the first two didn't go so well. Uh, the first one I heated it too strongly and I got uh, it boiled over. 
Uh, second time, I had a different drying setup and uh, that got overwhelmed. So <laughs> hopefully third time's a charm. So we're gonna heat very gently and I've got a different drying setup that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but first of all, what are we actually doing here? We're reacting ammonium chloride and sodium nitrite and these produce nitrogen in a two-step reaction. So first step, it makes ammonium nitrite and sodium chloride or table salt. Uh, and then the ammonium nitrite it turns out is pretty unstable, especially at higher temperatures. So that will decompose and turn into nitrogen and water. And so that means the overall reaction is ammonium chloride and sodium nitrite gives us salt water and nitrogen gas. So it's a nice clean reaction. Just a few minutes later and it looks like the solution is boiling, but it's actually not. So let me show you the actual temperature. Um, we're at about 55 when I took it out of there. So definitely, I mean, it's like half as much as, as boiling water is supposed to be. So it's definitely not that. Uh, so this is nitrogen that we're producing. So that's good news. Now we're producing nitrogen, but it's coming from a hot aqueous solution, which means there's also a lot of water vapor that comes off with it. So if we want a nice pure nitrogen sample, uh, we're going to have to try to get rid of that water somehow. And that's the idea of this setup here. So our nitrogen is getting produced over here, which you can see from the bubbles, as well as a lot of water, which you can see from the condensation. And then it's going to travel up through here into the first big test tube here. And I've got two short glass rods there, or glass tubes rather. Uh, so the nitrogen comes in and comes back out, comes up through the second tube and down into the uh, sulfuric acid solution is what this is. This is concentrated sulfuric acid and it's red because it's a drain cleaner. So it's just got some kind of dye in it. And you see the glass tube extends almost all the way to the bottom. Actually, it does extend all the way to the bottom. That, what looks like the end of the tube, is a air bubble right now. So you see how it's go going down? So that's good. Uh, we're about to get our, our first um, couple of bubbles through. And it's going back up a little bit too, so it looks like there's a leak somewhere in my system. But hopefully we have enough pressure to push this through all the way and we'll get a bubble in a minute. But anyways, the point of this uh, sulfuric acid is to dry the uh, gas that's coming over. So it's going to get rid of all of that uh, water vapor. And uh, then it'll exit out through here, coming up through this glass tube and out into our collection tube at the end here. So we should in theory have nice dry nitrogen gas accumulating in this tube once it starts to bubble over. Looks like we're about to get our first bubble through the drying solution. Hey, there it goes. Now we're making dry nitrogen. So now we're getting a decent rate of bubbling and that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So now that dry nitrogen, once it travels all the way through the acid, will come up and collect in our tube over here and uh, build up. So we'll have to give it a few minutes because that's a pretty big tube. So uh, once that has filled up with nitrogen, then uh, I'll test it. Now at this point, I don't really want it to go much faster than it is currently. Uh, I'm just trying to take it real easy since this thing has gotten away from me a few times. So I'm going to keep a real close eye on the rate of bubbles coming off of the solution. And I'm going to adjust the heat as necessary to uh, you know, keep it at a reasonable rate. So it looks like I've started springing some leaks here. Uh, I actually, at one point, I got the pressure so high that uh, this joint was popping off, so I put a ket clip on there. And I know that's not great because it's right above the heat, but it should only be for a few minutes until we're done. So hopefully it'll survive. And then also uh, this joint right here, where I go from big tube to little tube, uh, is kind of cobbled together and that tape is not holding very well so I have to like pinch it in place. <laughs> but uh, hopefully this will hold together long enough where we can, we can finish this off. The good news at least is that the sulfuric acid is working because uh, you can see over here it's pretty good reflux so there's tons of water over here uh, and it goes through in there. Even this first tube is uh, real sweaty and there's a couple of drops of water that made it to the bottom. So a lot of water in there, a lot of water in this tube bleeding over, a lot of water in that glass tube. But by the time we get through the sulfuric acid, this is perfectly dry. No condensation at all.
So the bubbling's starting to slow down and that's probably due to the reactants starting to get exhausted, but it's also probably due to more leaks springing up. <laughs> so I guess I'm gonna uh, take it apart and uh, see if we can't test this. So the test I'm gonna do is the lit splint test, uh, which will tell me if this is a non-combustible gas. So I've got a extra long splint here and we'll plunge it into the gas and see if it extinguishes the fire. Hey, awesome. Started about right there. So this is actually pretty full. Oh, that's great. Let's do it again. Oh. There we go. So lit splint into the gas. Gets put out. So that, of course, is not diagnostic for nitrogen. It doesn't prove that it's nitrogen. It just shows that it doesn't support combustion. But if you look at the reactants that we started with, you know, we've got ammonium chloride and sodium nitrite. So the potential gases I could see being produced are nitrogen, of course, uh, nitrogen oxides, maybe ammonia, um, chlorine somehow, oxygen, maybe hydrogen. Uh, but all those gases would behave differently in this test. The oxygen and the nitrous oxides are oxidizers, and so they would make the flame brighter. The ammonia, I would definitely smell, which I don't, so it's not that. Uh, hydrogen would make the little pop. Chlorine, I would also smell. Uh, so if you kind of rule out all the other possibilities, really you're just left with nitrogen. And more to the point for carbon dioxide, there's just no source of carbon anywhere in this system, so it can't be that either. And so if you want to, uh, now that you've got your dry nitrogen gas, you could pass that into a, uh, a vial or an ampule or something and have a nice display sample of nitrogen that you made. A couple of notes about disposal here. I left the setup all connected for a bit too long and I actually got a little bit of suck back to come into here. Uh, that's why I had this, by the way. That's a suck back trap. So when I turn the heat off on the original uh, flask, that reduced the pressure on that side of the apparatus. And so instead of you know, things coming this way, uh, gas was going that way, which sucked sulfuric acid up through that tube, across the tube up top, and then down into this empty flask, which is why I had that. So otherwise that acid would have went directly into the reaction mixture, which can be very bad. Uh, so that thing served its purpose. Shouldn't have had to, because I should have took it apart, but here we are. So I'm actually gonna keep this sulfuric acid and just store it as slightly diluted uh, concentrated acid, uh, but this stuff ran into a bunch of water on the way back, so I'm gonna just neutralize that. Um, so first I dilute it by pouring it into a whole bunch of other water, and then we're just gonna add baking soda. And while I'm doing that, uh, back here is the remainder of the solution that was in the uh, round bottom, or the Florence flask rather, the reaction flask. And uh, that stuff, because this sodium nitrite is a bit toxic, um, I want to make sure that I get rid of it. So I'm just going to uh, keep on heating it. I'll, I'll keep it on the heat uh, for a little, on a low heat uh, to let everything completely react and uh, get rid of all that nitrite. And then I'll be left with basically just salt water with a little bit of extra ammonium chloride in there, which is totally harmless. So, you know, since one of the reactants is a little toxic and the products are so benign, you might as well take it to completion. So that's what I'm doing back there. And you, you might notice that uh, the volume is uh, a bit different than what I started with. Uh, I combined this reaction with the previous time I tried it and failed. So 